When the big man was killed, you must have wanted it. Its blood was on the leaves. If it bleeds, we can kill it. Even if it bleeds, if you cannot see it, you cannot kill it. I will show you how to see it. In order to see something, you have to set up the mount and the optic on the AK. We'll start with uh, the mount. I have here in my hands two examples, AK master mount, optic mount, and RS regulator mount. I'm using both of these mounts for a very long time and they really are very good. But most of the mounts will share similar idea on how to make sure that they sit tight on the AK side row. Just to clarify, this is the AK side row, so-called AKM type. Some of the rifles, like the Yugo rifles, will have slightly different rail and you will need the Yugo type mount for that rail. And also some of the older Century Arms rifles made by the Century will have a specific rail which the RS Regulate 309 mount type will clamp to those uh, side rows. But 99% of the time the A came AKM regular side roll will be where you want to place your optic uh, mount. Now, I said that the optic mounts share something similar between most of them. Uh, they do have a so-called tension tab. This is the tension tab and this is the master mount but if you can see if you if I will press it down I will expose the screw on the top of that tension tap and just to show you that I'm not bullshitting you I do have the RS regulate mount and again if I will this is the tension tap and if I'll press down that tension tap it will expose the screw now since you guys are really smart you probably figure it out that if you will press that tension tap and you're exposing the screw you can adjust the screw you can either screw in or screw out. By screwing the screw in it will increase the tension on that tap. That means when you will attempt to slide in the mount to the side row it could get really really tight on the tensioning tap but also the tensioning tap will regulate how much tension since the name tension tap will be when you pressing the lever to lock it the side rail mount in position so by screwing it in you will increase increase the tension screwing it out you will decrease the tension now you want to have that side mount sitting on the side row as tight as possible. I cannot stress this out. You want this to be as tight as possible. You don't want that optic mount to be flopping up and down and it should be actually hard to close that locking lever. I forgot to say the one thing. I usually put a little bit grease on that side row when installing the mount on the AK. It helps, trust me, it helps, okay? So, once you got this in and the lever is locked, we adjusted the tensioning tab and we know that the mount will stay in place even when the rifle will be operating and recoiling. The next thing is you wanna determine where you want to have that optic placed on that upper portion of the mount. Here is the example of rather the short mount, but I can still move that optic a little bit back and forward and find the holes which I'm going to tie that optic to the mount. Or in the case of RS Regulate, I got the whole longer portion because this is the 303 lower mount and I have that whole long rail here 
where I can keep sliding and moving that upper mount to make it sit perfectly in regards to my eye relief to achieve the perfect eye relief. And what I'm looking at with the eye relief when I when I'm behind the rifle and I do have the optic mounted and I'm looking through the scope what I like to have and you can experiment this with your eye if, if you will move really press forward based on the eye relief you will see that the picture either becomes larger or it shrinks a little bit and you're getting like a shadow a ring shadow in the back. I like to have all the scopes set up that I have a little bit of that shadow on the edges and this is done because it will allow me to achieve a perfect position of my eye. It will guide me, that shadow, that ring shadow will guide my eye to be in the perfect center position behind that optic. It's easier for me to navigate and center myself behind that optic and avoid any parallax errors. And I know all the manufacturers, it doesn't, here I got the primary arms, but it doesn't matter. All the manufacturers of those prism scopes will tell you, oh, they are, you know, past 100 yards or so, they are parallax free and everything. Trust me, you can have the parallax errors. And if you want to test this for yourself, you can start moving when looking at the target and you can start moving your eye left and right up and down and you will see even at the extended ranges that that reticle will start floating a, a little bit and that will cause the loss of, of the precision of uh, the rifle because this is not really tied to the accuracy of the rifle but it will be tied to precision of the system you put in because you are inputting the error from the human eye. So having that ring shadow is guiding my eye and it's easier for me to always get the almost center position as much as I can and it doesn't matter which position I'm shooting from. That's what I'm doing and I highly recommend to set up the optic the same way. Going back for the moment to the two piece optic mounts like RS regulate here, please don't forget to put if uh, you have and you should have the blue Loctite on each of those screws and let the blue Loctite sit and cure for a 24 hours before going and using this on the rifle. So it is extremely important to lock those screws in once you got everything set up. The one more thing about the RS Regulate uh, mount, and I'm placing this especially that way so you can see it, you have a little bit more adjustment on the horizontal axis. You can move that mount left and right to perfectly center the optic behind the board uh, line. So the way how I'm doing is when I place the optic on the rifle, I usually remove the dust cover. I'm not going to do it here, but I usually remove the dust cover and I remove the bolt cutter and the recoil spring. And I can see if that bottom portion, if you will center your eye and center look at the board, I can see it then if it's in center and I'm locking it in position and then I'm adding the blue Loctite to the screws and tightening everything up. Now, if you will happen to have this optic slightly to the left or slightly to the right, this is not the end of the world. As long as you can zero it, you will be perfectly fine. Guys, do not forget, for example, SVD has the scope completely on the left side. Our M1D sniper rifles had the scope on the left side and being offset a little bit is no big deal because of the corner fire and physics and geometry, how the stuff works, it really washes out. So do not stress. 
as long as you can zero it because if you cannot zero it because you run out of the adjustments then yes you have issues and you have uh, troubles and like with the rs regulate mount then i'll adjust it more depends on which way you have to do to gain regain the mole adjustments on the optic to allow me the zero the rifle all right let's jump to another section and we'll talk about setting up the diopter rig. Once we have optic set up on the mount, we are ready for the final adjustment. It is extremely important step, but somehow people are not paying attention to it. Most of the prism scopes or LPVO scopes or regular scopes should have diopter ring and diopter ring it looks like it's a part of the scope but it is really not as you can see it sits tight but you can adjust that diopter ring to regain the crystal sharp picture of the reticle and the best way to do so is go behind the rifle behind the scope look at the bright background here i'm using the basically a blue sky do not look at the sun or you may damage your eyes but look at the blue sky and with my left hand i'm going to adjust that picture so i can see reticle as crystal sharp as possible and you can do the quarter movements go behind the optic take the eye off and quickly look is that reticle looking sharp the reticle because your eye over the time will adjust to it but you want to have that instant sharpness so you can cover it the hand with your hand the scope and uncover it and you should immediately register that reticle if it's not sharp if your eye is playing to regain the sharpness that means you are not set and you have to keep either screwing in or screwing out. Don't look through the scope. Don't look through the scope when you're doing it. Why? Again, because your eye will adapt to the conditions what you're doing. So I usually don't look. I move by quarter move, maybe even less, right? And then quickly look through the scope. Okay, nope, not good. A little bit more. Not good yet. Almost, but not good. A little bit more. Oh shit, yeah, that's perfect. That's what I like it. And setting up that diopter ring is absolutely important because this is how your eye is going to see the reticle. So if you're going to have that fuzzy picture of the reticle floating around, that's not going to work very well and it's not going to help your accuracy. All right, these are basic steps on how I am setting up an optic and I will be ready now to proceed and zero the rifle. The one thing which I want to add to is when you have a new rifle and you just set up an optic on it, after around 150 to 200 rounds, I will basically retighten the tensioning screw to check if it's still tight or I can maybe increase the tightness and I will re-zero the rifle. The reason for this is because your everything on AK through around 200 rounds is still settling down the rivets the, the, everything, the pieces of metal, everything is settled, settling down. It takes some time. Also, the fire cracking in the battle, barrel should be done around 100, 150 rounds. Uh, and that usually means that your barrel will gain a little bit more speed. So that may affect the performance of your rifle. So I'll bet you basically re zero or check that zero. How is it working right now? Uh, and uh, if you have to make some corrections, make some corrections. All right, that's it. Thank you for watching, guys. And please don't forget to be back for the more videos.